curiosity, imagination, dreams, visions, innovations, ideas to spread. Where do you think th those words are hitting the part of the body? Let's go find out. Let's go to a butchery. And what do you see? You see the liver, you see the lungs, you see the heart, you see the kidney, you see the bones, you see the muscles which you call meat. But something is missing. Where will we find that? I would like to invite you on a visit to my school. Of the things I've mentioned, there is an additional thing you will see. And that is the brain. If you visit my school, I will give you the opportunity to hold the human brain in your hands. And that is because over the past 18 years, my colleagues and I, every year we remove at least 80 brains. And if you do a quick arithmetic, that goes to 1,400 plus brains that we have removed and used for teaching and learning and research. What does it look like? It looks like what I'm holding. But this is a model. There is always a difference between the model and the human brain. And the fascination that comes every year is the same. It doesn't change. I'm sure if you did life science in this high school, one name that you will always remember is the medulla oblongata. <laughs> you keep wondering, what is that? It's part of the brain. As a matter of fact, it's part of what we call the brainstem that connects the brain with the spinal cord. However, if you look at what I'm holding, you will see there's a big part which we call the cerebellum. Cerebrum. And that is what you're seeing just before you. You can see the red linings. Those are the blood supply. Do you know? 2% of your weight is the weight of the brain. Do you know? 700 mils of blood passes through this brain, your brain, every minute. And do you know? 20 to 25 percent of oxygen is taken up by the brain because it carries out a high amount of activity, seen and unseen. I'm sure you can relate with seeing through the eyes. The brain has a place for it. At the back, we call the visual cortex. On the sides, when you hear, the auditory cortex towards the middle when you touch and feel and move the motor cortex of the frontal lobe and the sensory cortex in the parietal lobe will deal with that. And by the way, when you talk, the broker speech area is there. And again, when you think and you make decisions, and you act out the decisions, and you review your actions thereafter, you'll be dealing with part of the frontal lobe that we refer to as the prefrontal cortex. Forgive me for my terminologies. But then, my discipline generated the terminology in health sciences. However, I will use terminologies that you will relate with. First of all, in our environment, you will hear a neuroanatomist, which is what I am, a neurophysiologist, neuropharmacologist, neurologist, neurosurgery, neuropsychiatry. That we hear more in our environment and in the hospitals. But I would like to introduce a term to you. Outside the university, neuroeducation. Not only neuroeducation, but again, Neurotechnology, neuropolicy, 
neuro diplomacy, neuro law, neuro ethics. However, before we go into that, I would also like to take advantage of part of the things I do. There's a part of the brain that is called the limbic system. And that system integrates the functions that I've mentioned and puts an emotion into it, the emotion you have, and converts it to a behavior. And that forms your character. It is immaterial wherever you're from. It is immaterial your background. It is immaterial who you know and what you know. I have found that having removed the brains for over 30 years, they look the same. What do we need to do? We need to challenge the brain the more, and that every one of us can do. How do you challenge the brain? Anything that will increase the function of the brain is a challenge, and it's normal. The brain is designed, designed to take on challenges and challenges and challenges, and that builds the experiences you have the experiences I have. So whenever you face a challenge, remember the brain is asking, I want to deal with the challenge. That is what I'm designed to do. So don't be afraid to deal with the challenges. And that takes care of the word neuroplasticity because that is what it does. Keep attending to the old challenges that is coming from every angle. And at the end of the day, it builds your experiences and it builds who you are. Let me take you with brain across the borders. I was privileged to travel from Copenhagen Airport to Johannesburg Airport. And my colleague asked me to bring some brain specimens. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Carrying brain across the borders. And here we are, I get in into the airport with the veterinary doctor and we walk straight to the point where you declare what you're carrying. <laughs> the veterinary doctor ahead of me, I follow him behind, and we get to the counter, and he puts the brain, and he says, hey, I have the brain of the tiger. And yes, the tiger brain was one of the brains. And you could imagine the reaction. The lady says, what did you say? And he says, the brain of the tiger. And she says, hold on. Let me call my supervisor. <laughs> she goes, calls the first supervisor, looks at it and says, what did you say you're carrying? Said the brain of the tiger. And he calls the third supervisor. And it was that supervisor that cleared me to carry the brain of the tiger and some other brains onto the flight. And she makes the comment, you should have carried the tiger itself. <laughs> And I thought the experience was over. I landed at O'Ara Tambo and I, I walked straight to declare what I was carrying. And the lady said, what are you carrying? I said, we'd like to see. It's the brain of the tiger. She says, no, wait. And she goes and calls the supervisor. The same experience I had at Copenhagen Airport, I had the same experience in Johannesburg Airport. And so how do we deal with neuroeducation? The best people to deal with the education is with the ministers of education. That is our top level. And so, Ebro and UNESCO International Bureau of Education gathered ministers and gathered neuroscientists and said, let's talk about the brain and the future of education and learning. I was privileged to be part of that meeting in Daegu, South Korea, and I was asked to talk about interfacing with stakeholders on brain wellness in Africa. I made my presentation. I was privileged to now speak with the incoming president of the International Brain Research Organization, Professor Tracy Bell, chatting with me. And beside us was the director then of the International Bureau of Education. And she put us all together to talk about how the neuroscientists can relate with education. And one interesting thing about South Korea is that they have a neuro policy, which is a brain research promotion act promulgated by the parliament and implemented in the country. 
I wonder how many African countries have such an act. I can tell you straight on, it's zero. And so after that, I came back and I asked myself, what do I do? We need to engage our community with the brain. And so started an accident. What is the name of the brain in your language? Do you know? Or you need to think about it. In my language, it's called Oborisi or Obor. And everywhere I've engaged that enga and discussion, I always get either a name or a description of something in the head. And so, the, lang the name of the brain in English is brain. The name of the brain in my language is Oboro. In Zulu language, there are two terms. While I will not mention it, but I got the meaning. It's either it speaks of the brain or it speaks of the mind. But we need to interrogate that more. I decided to propagate advocacy on neuroeducation, but we need to start from the primary school. We need to affect our curriculum. We need to bring it down to the level of the community. In Kenya last year, we did an exercise in Swahili, it's called Ubongo. And we produced a pamphlet on neurodevelopmental disorders in Kiswahili that speaks to autism, epilepsy, attention deficiency, uh, hyperactivity, and global developmental delay. It was well received. And we need to replicate that across the continent. I tried this with my foundation. We called in three schools from Soweto. I said, come to my school. And what did I do? It was a brain awareness week. And I said, all of you must hold the human brain in your hand. You can imagine what it looked like. <laughs> Are you sure? I said, yes. What are we holding? The human brain. And I moved it further, and I said, you're going to have a competition on that. And we repeated the same process, brought the schools, went to their schools, set up exams, they attended, took the top seven of three schools, brought them to Wits University, subjected them to an international brain, research, brain uh, competition. And at the end of the day, we had four top students and we've been asked to present them next year for international brain competition to represent South Africa. We have a brain renaissance coming up. In the 60 plus years of the International Brain Research Organization, Africa will be hosting that Congress that takes place once in every four years in 2027. And we want to call it an African renaissance on the brain. We want to include every aspect of neuroeducation. Name it. Whatever you call it, we want to constitute the neuro people. But the neuro people starts with you. You have the right to know how your brain functions. And I can guarantee you, wherever you are, is the same. And we're also interested in Africans in diaspora to be part of this discussion. You have a role to play. Choose any of the neurotechnologies, technologies that I've introduced to you, and you can join us on this mission. Thank you very much.